Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Plays. And today we're going to have part three of this week's update uh, se video series for the Factorio Space Exploration and Prastorio 2 uh, uh, streams. So this is going over all, everything that happened in the Monday stream and just, you know, talking about it a bit, what our thinking was and how things have been going. And let's start off with this spaceship. So this is the Caladrian, our long-range exploration and combat ship. So it's, it's, it's quite good for exploration, although it turns out Mike did do some experimentation in the last stream. And it turns out the deep space exploration uh, ship, despite having lower powered engines along the back, and I think fewer of them, uh, we've got nine of those on here, and, we've got, and then we've got the bigger engines here where we've got um, ten of them. Okay, so there's only slightly more engines. However, the Caladrian is significantly bigger and heavier. If we look in here, we can see that this one has a stress level of 2,333, whereas the deep space exploration is only 773 so there's a huge difference between the two of them uh, this one is much much smaller and therefore even with smaller engines lower powered engines because these are the ion engines as well as opposed to these antimatter engines even with that this one is still noticeably faster Anyway, yes, so, but this ship is, is geared for combat, as you can see by the way, it's got the, sh the uh, shield generator around the edge, it's got a lot more lasers, it did used to have the uh, long range laser turrets, it still has artillery in the middle, and it used to have shields going all the way around the edge. However, Mike has been using it for um, Arcosphere collection, so it also has on board, it has a, a few convenient things like um, a, a, some probe rockets, some Arcosphere collectors, and there'll be a launcher in here somewhere as well. So it, it can fly, you, it can be flown out to a place, and then you can use the robots that are in these, in these two, uh, uh, Robot ports on here to fly out, build up your uh, your launcher, and then start launching out the uh, launching out the Arcosphere collectors, and then use the robots to collect them all back in again, put it all in these boxes, and then fly it all back over to Norvis where you can uh, set it up and ready to go out again. Unfortunately. Uh, and this, this I have to admit, as I think I said last week, this was actually, unfortunately, was, was my fault. When the ship was out in Fenestra, I decided it'd be a good idea to point a beam at it and find out how, how much power got through when it was in Fenestra and see how quickly it charged up. Because this, this would be potentially useful for in the future if, you wanted, if we decide we want to power Fenestra with a beam system and just, and just run everything out there from, from, a, from a beam emitter in, in, in a Kalidus orbit. And we discovered that you get about 0.3% of the power through, so that's probably not going to be realistic not going to be practical. Um, unfortunately, I then forgot to point that beam back at the ship when it flew home again, and so when it landed here, it didn't charge the uh, the heat, uh, the energy beam receiver back up again. So when it flew back out again, it got stuck and ran out of pa ran out of heat in the in the uh, energy beam receiver. Kind of fortunately for us, this happened in Fenestra, so we immediately started pointing some beams at it to try and bring the temperature back up again. But after several hours, it had only got up by about another hundred degrees, or maybe a couple a couple of hundred degrees, something like that. And we didn't reckon that was in the going to be enough energy to bring it all the way back here, especially with the amount of extra, extra power that, that it uses as being being such a, a much, much larger ship. And so we had a quick brainstorm, and we thought of various possible ways of, uh, of recovering the ship. The first of which was to leave it out there for a very long time with the beams pointing at it, and eventually the temperature would get up to a point where it could fly back. But that would take months, at least months of real world time, and, and, and many hours, probably a day or two of, uh, of game time. Another possibility I thought of was to fly out with this ship and park it right next to it over here and run a Naquium heat pipe from one into the other just to push some of the heat through. And because it, conveniently it had failed in Fenestra, that meant we could land another ship next to it if we wanted to. Another possibility that someone suggested would be to fly out there and then just, just dismantle the whole ship, take it back in your pockets and then and rebuild it back over here and, and, uh, and, and, and warm it up again and just get and just pretend the whole thing never happened. But that felt too much like cheating. We, did, we didn't want to do that. So the uh, the answer we eventually came up with was to put in the an antimatter reactor here, right next to the uh, the beam receiver, and this is now we we then we then installed that and we chucked some fuel in it, and this was sufficient to then pump enough heat into the energy beam receiver to bring that up in temperature a decent chunk, that, so to the point where it then had enough heat to fly it back here just under the under the power that had been generated from the antimatter reactor. Now we could probably have left immediately because the amount of energy being produced by this is probably less than the amount of energy being used by the ship, and even if it was wasn't if the ship had got sort of stuck in inverted commas if it if it had slowed down a bit part way back then it could have just limped home on the heat coming out of here but I think we left it for long enough to bring this up to a decent temperature before we launched anyway and so we now have an emergency recovery system on the ship we have this this uh, antimatter reactor here and if we ever need to increase the temperature of that we can just flip this flip this insert around it'll put a couple of um, uh, fuel cells in here this will then start burning them and that'll well they like a nuclear reactor they burn at a steady constant rate so I have just wasted these five 
because they've just been put into here. It's going to burn through them anyway, even though this whole system is already at 10,000 degrees. But, you know, it doesn't matter that I've wasted a little bit of antimatter because I'm not going to save, so it's not going to have happened in the, the real game anyway. It's, it's irrelevant. I'm just demonstrating. So this means we have an emergency uh, recovery system here, and there's 83 cans in here, so that's going to be plenty because I think Mike says he went out there with 140 of them, so a decent amount. Um, and that was quite easy for him to collect because they're being produced over here in, in, in quantity, uh, 50 at a time, I believe, for the, um, for the, for the Arcosphere gen collectors. So he was able to just set up a, uh, a logistics request, pull the 50 out of this box, then pull another 50 out, and then presumably another 40 because that was what was made. So yeah, that went quite nicely. He was able to go off and, and do the rescue. And so I think it probably would be worth putting another one of these into the deep space exploration ship, again as an emergency system that we don't really intend to use, but we have it available just in case. The problem is, where do we put it? I mean, we, could, it, we can't put it down here because this tank, this water tank is in the way. The water's kind of important. And we're bringing a supply of water in here. Now, I mean, I suppose actually we could probably put, we could possibly put the water tank above here, but then we'd have to find a way to get the water from in the, from out of these kind of, uh, these condenser turbines up to here. And that, that'd be awful. I think the best way to do it would be to remove this stuff up here. And then we can put the generator in the, the reactor in here like that. And that, th there we go. And we've now linked the, uh, yes, we've linked a hot point to a hot point on there. So that will be able to pass it through. Another chest, a, a blue chest probably makes the most sense. We could put that there. And then could put an inserter in next to it like that. And tell this one to request some of the uh, the antimatter capsules. And I suppose then we'd need to switch one of these. Oh, that's in just just out of range. Maybe, maybe I could put this in on, no, there isn't quite room on the other side to put that in. Um... Yeah, with a little bit of uh, shenaniganery around here, I'm sure we could get this up and working. And then we would have another emergency system in this one, just in case this one ever runs out of uh, out of heat. Whether we should then do that with all of the um, the uh, Stardust chips as well, and put them into we, we we don't we don't we don't have one at the moment. They're all there isn't one for me to point out at the moment. They're all out <laughs> out uh, out doing important Stardust and Naquium related things. Here's one. <laughs> so maybe we could then, no, I, bleh, this is, I've forgotten just how full these ships were. I don't think we're going to be fitting an antimatter reactor into this ship, not without making it physically bigger. I, there's, there's technically, there's sort of room up here because we could remove the, uh, we could remove the accumulators perhaps. Uh, we could all, certainly remove the accumulators from, from up here, but then... I suppose we'd then maybe move the uh, spaceship console up to the top and... I don't know. We'd have. Could we then shift things around here a little bit? Maybe move all of these, all of this stuff up a couple of square. Even then, I think we'd really, really struggle to get an, another antimatter reactor in here. So I think that's probably not probably going to be a non-starter. We'll just reckon on not having that problem with these ships. And if we ever do, then we can always fly out, land next to it. We'll come over here and build a another sort of wart on the side of it to pump some more heat in, like I did with the ion stream when we ran out of fuel for those and ran it in through an underground pipe. So. Yeah, we'd, we'd, we'd find a way, but I think these these are not going to be practical to put an emergency rescue system in, um, just because th there isn't space. The ships are too a bit too tight. But it worked well over here, and you know that's the main thing. We got the system. We got we managed to rescue the ship, and we managed to bring it back. Once we had this ship available again, in fact, once we had both ships available again, we used them in uh, both at the same time. So they both went out deploying Arcosphere collectors, and so we've managed to gain quite a lot more. Uh, we managed to get 16 with this ship, 8 from Sands of Time and 8 from Asteroidia. And then with the Explor Exploration one, we went out to the wonderfully named Oblong Globulator, uh, <laughs> where we managed to get 9, 9 from Sea of Sorrows, 8 from Mel Melancholia, that's another fantastic name, and another 8 from Rocky Ridge. As so if we look out in deep space, well, we might be able to tell roughly where uh, Mike has been going out to go and get those. Okay, here's Sands of Time and Asteroidia, so we went out to those two. Rocky Ridge is down here, it's kind of on its own, which feels a bit weird. Maybe Mike's been doing sort of hop out via Finestra, or maybe he's just picked up all the all the really remote ones. Okay, here's Oblongular, Oblongulobulata, uh, Sea of Sorrows and Melancholia. They're all up here. So you've got this little cluster, and then he obviously went, oh, I've got a load of fuel left. Let's stop off at Rocky Ridge on the way back, uh, just because that makes sense. <laughs> and that brings us, at least in theory, up to a nice healthy 144 of them. So we should have, we should now have um, 144 Arcospheres in here, plus, uh, although there are two in this, in this grav facility over here that haven't been polarized yet, because you need two to actually run the recipe and get four coloured Arcospheres out of it. So, yes, system working quite nicely. We've got the Arcospheres churning through gradually over time and they're being t and being turned into all of the all the bits and pieces of the data cards and things like that that we need. Um, it's, uh, we, although it looks like the system has now been turned off, so I think this is because Mike has been messing around with it. 
However, before I men mention the messing around he's been doing, I should also mention that he has noticed that we seem to have lost six Arcospheres somehow. They have disappeared. So if we take a look in the uh, production system, we can see that we've got 144 Arcospheres have been, have been consumed. So we brought in, brought them all in from wherever, and they've now been churned through over here and turned into Arcospheres. Over here you can see it says 146 have been produced and that's, that's because we've got, as I said, we've got the extra two inside the grav facility over here that have not been processed yet. However, if we look inside this warehouse down here, we can see that we've only got 138 and that's a little bit concerning. I believe that Mike has gone around looking through all of these machines and has determined that there aren't any left in any of any of them. Uh, so there shouldn't be any problems related, any, any sort of stuck in these machines. We seem to have lost. We seem to have lost six of them, and that is quite worrying because these things are, you know, they're kind of valuable. We would like to make sure we don't destroy any of them. We don't lose any of them. And I think it was reckoned that the best, the best answer we managed to come up with was that what there was that a machine had the recipe changed on it, and for some reason, instead of the um, all of the everything that it had in it being dumped on the floor around it or going into somebody's inventory, it got somehow destroyed. I do, it has just occurred to me to wonder if it's possible that any of them got dumped on the floor and then taken away by robots and they, so they've disappeared into the, into the logistics network. But sort of trying to squint at the tiny, tiny stuff at the bottom of there that shows what's in the logistics system storage, I don't see any Arcospheres down there, so I'm pretty sure that's not what's happened. I think they must have been accidentally destroyed by something and it's, yeah, it must have been sort of messing around with the buildings and, and, and that is, is rather unfortunate. So we need to try and be very, very careful about not doing that in the future because well, Arcospheres, I mean, if you, if you lost anything else, even the most expensive things we're making at the moment, the Naquium Tesseracts, you lose six of those, you go, oh well, never mind, and you make some more. Because you see, we've made 879 of them so far, but Arcospheres, we've made less than 150 in total, so to lose six of them is not only is it a bit careless, it's also a significant proportion, it's 4% of all the ones that we've ever had. So we'd rather that didn't happen, thank you very much. Let's try not to do that again. And Mike has been messing around with the Arcosphere processing uh, once again. I mean, that's sort of what it's, it's sort of what he does <laughs> at the moment. That is his life at the moment. So over here somewhere, he's uh, he's reduced the clock tick frequency, so or the the clock effect. Thing. I think it's yes. Yeah, so looking over here, so we're now we're only watching for less than a hundred before we reset the system. Uh, and the idea, and the idea over this is, it means that in theory now the folding systems should should get Arcospheres passed out to them a little bit more quickly. Now a hundred ticks is only just over is, is, is only just over a second and a half. And these machines don't run that quickly. So that makes me wonder if you're going to get a lot of extra Arcospheres being passed out through the uh, through the folding system. I, I I don't know. I, I I'm I'm not. I'm trying not to worry too much about exactly how this system over here is running. Um, but it seems to sort of mostly work. We, as you can see, we've, we've had lots of output made over here. The system is it's kind of basically working. So he's, he's uh, that's now running apparently three times faster than it did when he first set it up. And oh yes, and he mentioned this is the clock he was referring to last week uh, when I said that he he changed the clocks over here. No, he meant he'd actually change it over here. He still hasn't upgraded that inserter over here, even though I suggested that maybe he should. But oh well, what can you do? He has, however, upgraded all of the Arcosphere folding and, um, and, uh, and and inversions to tier 6 speed modules and the associated beacons with them as well. So now all of these are running as fast as they possibly can. As fast, as fast as they, not as fast as they possibly can, but as fast as they realistically can with the stuff we have at the moment. I don't think we're quite ready to start putting higher than tier 6 modules into these machines at this point. They're just a, a bit too expensive for that. However, this should mean that everything should now... We'll be able to process through the Arcospheres over here and fold them and try and get everything back under control and in balance a bit more quickly than we were before. He also added in a machine here to make the wormhole data cards. So as you can see, that's bringing in cryonite and naquium cubes and data cards. And then a handful of, um, of various Arcospheres as well to get fed in, in, in along here and then pass back out, out onto the air disposal belt. Um, he then realised that he couldn't actually program it because we haven't done this tech yet. We haven't made, haven't researched Deep Space Science Catalog 4. Uh, we'll get there eventually, but we haven't, we haven't done it yet so uh, that's um it, it's sitting there waiting i guess the uh, the question is do we want to do deep space science 4 next or advanced science 2 because both of those are going to require significant expansions on the um, on the arcosphere usage and, and all this sort of shenaniganry around here so there's going to be a fair amount of tweaking and upgrading and modifications and so on required in this general area but for the time being we've got a system that will just is probably going to be mostly okay this does also require supercooled thermofluid, which is probably what this pipe here is for. So once he's got this actually programmed, he can bring this up and then shenanigan it round to go into here and then maybe bring the, bring the warm stuff out on the other side. I don't know, this whole thing would have been a bit nicer if you moved it all a little bit to the left. Yeah, one square to the left would be enough, so it butts up against this pipe and then we'd have an... 
we'd have to move this belt up or down to get the pipe through, but then you'd be able to bring the warm straight back out and drop it into this pipe, so it might be worth it. So Advanced Science Pack 2 requires the Advanced Catalogue 2, of course, and most of these are, these are all very heavily Arcosphere recipes, so we're going to need a lot of Arcosphere for that. So I suspect what we're probably going to do is add in more belt going like this, and then round and back down to here, or something like that, in order to then be able to put the extra um, science production in around here, up the, up at the top. Uh, this will all, of course, need to be linked up with cables like this. It'll all need to be, and we'll probably, and I, as I still think we need to upgrade this to a deep space belt so they'll flow round a bit faster. But this is hopefully going to be where we will put the uh, the advanced science to. But I think that again is probably may well be a thing for Mike to get on with because he's he's in charge of the Arcospheres, and I don't think any of the rest of us will dare touch this system just in case we break it and then get into trouble. <laughs> so we'd better be careful. There. He has also added in the Naquin process of production as well, though. That's that's an important one. So along here, we're going to need these for, I, I, I don't know, they're, they're another intermediate. That's, I'm sure they're going to be needed for Deep Space Science 4, and I think they're probably going to be needed for a lot of the advanced stuff that we're going to be building. So it's important to have this one in. And again, this takes in large quantities of the Arcospheres, and uh, and will then eventually produce uh, the the, the, um, the processes in uh, some sort of quantity. Uh, what, do, what do you take in? So it takes in the AI core, so those have been brought in by train, and it takes in the Tesseracts, but those are already more or less here. So I believe the advanced sciences are also going to use these AI cores. I can't remember whether it uses tesseracts as well, but I guess we'll, we'll find out as we get as, once we get uh, get that one done. I don't want to I don't want to spoil everything for next week because <laughs> maybe that'll be what what happens for next time. But there's going to be other inputs needed for those. I remember that from the other, from the video that I haven't made yet. The processors did also require the advanced neural gel, so that's been brought in from down here where it's being used for the for, for generating the actual science packs themselves. So that was a relatively easy one to split off. It's been brought up here with the underground pipes, as you'd imagine. Only a little bit of spaghetti that's quite nice happy with that and, uh, and he says oh yes he, he does say it. He, brought, he added in an extra station for the AI, AI cores to bring those in he says he also says we he can't set the recipe for that one as well but I think that might be getting confused because it's this because he has set the recipe you can see it right there if there were um, arcospheres drifting around we'd probably be making these things by now uh, maybe he was just referring to this one or maybe maybe that got researched after he built it I'm not quite sure but he has said because we haven't researched deep space science 4 yet uh, which is not the case um, because you don't need deep space deep space science 4 for that if I turn this back on again, presumably, well, we'll, we'll get these, uh, the, the, the Arcospheres coming around here. We'll start trying to make the various science packs, okay? So that'll steal the first handful of the, um, of, of the spheres that come through. But eventually, we'll get a decent, we'll get them flowing past these machines, hopefully. In fact, you know what? Let's go in here and let's put in that upgrade that I've been talking about. All the way around here. I want all this just to run faster, so we'll get the so we'll get all the arcospheres flowing through that little bit quicker. But hopefully, round here, we'll then start to get some of the arcospheres we need for this recipe being fed into the um, into into this machine. I hope. I mean, they're, they're making their way round, but apparently, none of those are the ones that are needed because all of this is turned on. We have yeah, so we'll we'll just have to let it run, and hopefully, eventually, the right spheres will make their way round, and we'll be able to start to start start doing stuff up here. Uh, okay, so we've now got the um, now got the tesseracts being built. But they're also that's also stealing uh, spheres as well. So you see what I mean about this system needing a bit more oomph, a bit more throughput. We need these we need these spheres to be coming out of here quite a lot faster than they are at the moment. Maybe the answer here is going to be to have a, a, su a sushi belt that's made out of splitters. But the problem is we've got we're 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 locked into the size of this warehouse here, and we don't have very much spare space around it to build. In fact, we don't have any spare space around it to build additional, well, anything. Unfortunately, so we just, we'll just have to. Make do with what we've got, and maybe eventually we'll get enough Arcospheres through to here to the, for this to actually start working and making... Oh no, it has made a Naquin processor, we just haven't unloaded it. So over here we need to set this to unload the Naquin processors, like this, and then that can be passed out. It'll go into the box over here, and we can start to make them. And as we can see from this, we've made... Okay, we've made two of them, so uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we, that is all we've made so far. But it is now, now that I've actually started taking the outputs out of this machine, it is starting to work, starting to run, starting to make the processors. And we have a glorious two of them in, this, in, in the box over here. I have let a moment pass, and now the Arcospheres are going around here much, much faster. Now, actually, it, <laughs> this hasn't actually made any difference at all, because they're still being fed onto it by this single stack inserter over here, so... Yeah, that's made, that's made absolutely no difference. I, there, there was no point in me doing that. I, it, was, it was a bit of a waste of time. However, if we can get the output of, here, of this sped up a bit, then, then things will go much, much better, and we'll be able to get... And then, then maybe this belt will be a bit more useful. We shall, we shall have to see how we, how we decide we want to do this. 
And so this brings me on to research. As you see, you know, in the last couple of videos, because I talked about it in both of them, and now I'm apparently going to talk about it again, so sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> we are currently trying to do a research that takes in, um, is it, I think it's the Deep Space Science 3, and we're not making any of those because something has, something has run out. It's probably the Tesseracts. And we're going to start to make them again now because I've, I've turned all this back on again. Anyway, so we, we aren't able to do any of this. We weren't able to do any of this research because we don't have any of the Deep Space Science 3 because we didn't have any Tesseracts because the uh, Arcosphere system was turned off. So I was playing around with other things. But we've done a bit of that research. We have also done the Energy Shield Mark V research. So now we can, we can make these things. They're <laughs> horrendously expensive. I don't know whether we'll actually make any of those at that price or not. Um, but we can, at least in theory, make them. Oh, and it requires another five Energy Shield Mark IVs as well. Jeez. I think we might just stick with the Mark IVs because that's, um, that's still expensive. That's the Mark III. Mark IV, Mark IV is presumably going to be even worse. Uh, actually, no, the Mark IV doesn't feel quite as bad as the Mark III because at least those are standard intermediates. Whereas the Mark III uses um, uses science based inter science card based intermediates as well, which is uh, slightly worse. And I sort of feel that quantum processors are more difficult to, ge to generate and produce than superconductor cables or heavy composites. Um, I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe it's just because of the way Tristan's been making them, and I just haven't internalize them as being a thing we have loads of, but they feel more difficult than the uh, than the superconductor cables or the heavy composites. Although that said, the heavy composites do require iridium, which as you saw yesterday, we don't currently have any of. Um, yes, yeah, so there's a little bit of a problem there. I'm also a little bit entertained by the choreography of the various different tiers of energy shields. So the energy shield Mark 1, he's just standing there, two he turns to his side, then three, four and five, he's just lifting his arms up above his head in a sort of a, I don't know, uh, star shape or a jazz hands or something. And then you've got the energy shield Mark 6 where they're going right up above his head as if he's just doing the first letter of the YMCA. So <laughs> I, I like I like the pattern that's going through. We've got sort of da a part, a, arms up a little bit, arms half, 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 part way up, high up above above head, and then way up straight up in the air. There's a nice pattern going on there. It, it's but it, it kind of looks a little bit silly. So let's move swiftly on to the Factory Spaceship 4, which we also researched. And this means we've now bumped up our spaceship structural integrity uh, cap by another 500, which means we can make even bigger spaceships. Um, at the moment. We don't need to. We've got the the the, um, <laughs> the main ships we're using for nearly everything uh, we built when we had a spaceship uh, inter structural integrity of about a thousand. Is it about a thousand? It's something like that. Let's have a quick look. It's less than a thousand. In fact, it's less than eight hundred. So we built these to fit in just under eight hundred. Um, so now the fact that we've got our spaceship structural integrity uh, available all the way up to three thousand is it's a little bit unnecessary. The Caladrian is almost certainly, yes, this is our biggest ship, and this has taken, actually this has taken the whole stress up to 2,300. So, okay, we could have, we, we obviously built this one before we had the current research, but now we have this current research, we could, in theory, make a slightly bigger version of it. Uh, maybe that means put a few more um, of the antimatter engines on the back of it, so it can actually go faster than the little exploration ship over here. I don't know. But, the, yeah, the potential is there. And if we ever do, and if we do decide we ever want to build a victory ship just because we can, then we're going to need all the structural integrity we, we can get our hands on, because those are tricky. We have unlocked the Advanced Catalog 2. So this is the first step towards making Advanced Science 2. This allows us to make all of the uh, all of the data cards that are required to make the catalog, which is then required to make the science pack. But as I've mentioned before a number of times, we don't, we don't like to research the actual science pack itself until we're ready to start making them. Because if we leave this unresearched, then all of the ones that rely on it appear in red and uh, rather than appearing in yellow, which means we can tell much more easily by looking at the top of the list here, which researches are currently available for us to do. So you can see here, for example, all of these ones in the light yellow. These are these are researches that we could do right now with the science packs that we have available that we are making even if we're not making them in very large quantities. We've then got these two in the dark in the sort of the dark slightly darker yellow, the orange. These are ones that can be done based on the researches we've done up to up until now. Yes, yeah, so if I grab that one as well, then you'll see suddenly lots and lots of these things have gone dark orange as well. So we've got lots of extra ones in there. And that means if we did all of these researches, these are all researches we could do right now. We would see, for example, the teleportation and the factory spaceship five and the and the singularity reactor would all appear as available, even though we haven't actually started making these packs yet. And so that'd be a little bit confusing when we're trying to choose what to do next. So we don't like to have the packs in there, and that keeps the system here over here just showing in yellow what we can actually do at the moment. We researched the Naquin processor, yay! Uh, so that'll be why. Uh, this is probably why uh, Mike then thought he could actually he could start making it. So it does actually only require Deep Space Science three, but we presumably hadn't researched it at the time. Then we did. Then he put it in there, but he didn't. He didn't change his notes. So yeah, fine. E easy mistake to make. So this has enabled us to then start doing things like the Nexus, which leads us on to Deep Space Science Four. We could start. We could research the Supercomputer Four. We could research Energy Storage, and we could research better thruster suits. It, it's unlocked a load of extra stuff for us, so we, we can carry on pushing through. But it doesn't. It, it in and of itself is not a thing we can really do anything with. It's just an intermediate, a, a product that goes into making other things. 
And then we've got onto the Nexus, which allows us to make the Nexus. whoop de doo uh, That seems a little bit um, self was namery But that is a, is a thing that you need for Deep Space Catalog 4. I do know why, because I've played 0.5, but I won't talk about it too much. But it, it, it's a thing that looks a little bit like one of the earlier science labs. It's... It, it's a thing that we're going to need in order to get Deep Space Science 4 up and running. That's all we need to know about it. We have a handful of other things at the moment as well that we could we could be doing research on. Many of them aren't particularly useful though. So I mean, I've said before that we, we intend to do everything that's a non-infinite research unless it gets really stupid. Um, so which is why we've done so much rocket reusability, even though we don't need to do, even though we don't need it. Uh, we've not done swarm safety up beyond four because we don't have very big swarms because uh, we don't really like using logistics bots if we can avoid it, and that's an infinite research, so we don't need to do that any further. There's at least some artillery shell shooting speeds. In fact, there's quite a lot of artillery shell shooting speeds left before we get to infinite down here. So we're going to be doing a few more of those even though it's a bit, a little bit pointless. Uh, same with refined flammables, uh, stronger explosives. Zone, oh, zone discovery has gone infinite. That's infinite, 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 infinite. We're going to do a bit more follower robot count, artillery shell range and so on. So you can see there's, there's a few, there's a bit more stuff in here to pick off. Um, I think the, one of the most useful ones in here is probably going to be mining productivity 12. So let's kick that one in. Kick that one off just for the fun of it. Get the, get the uh, labs up and running. Uh, and then there's, a, there's a various other things in here. So a lot of this is going to be just sort of a bit of a, bit of a grind and I think this is something we're going to leave grinding away in the background make sure everything all the science and stuff is working while we go off and start messing around with the puzzles so we can leave this as just something that is ticking away in the background while while we're busy doing doing Stargate shenanigans or very big very fast spaceship shenan based shenanigans so there's gonna be quite a lot left for us to grind through but there's also quite a lot for us to just think about so having a bit of a grind in there isn't too much of a problem really and so that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. On Monday, uh, tomorrow in fact, we shall be getting on with some of the things I've been talking about today and over the rest of the weekend. And we'd like to we'd like to start sort of working on Advanced Science 2 and Deep Space Science 4, but those are both very, very Arcosphere heavy. So maybe I'll try and nibble on some of the bits around the edge. Uh, anything that doesn't involve Arcosphere, so Mike can carry on being our Arcosphere king and just working on the uh, working on that, making sure that works as well as possible. On Wednesday, I shall be back for another stream. This one is uh, satisfactory. And in last week, uh, last week's stream, I started making things out of aluminium. And this week, I want to make supercomputers. So that be a that should be a good, interesting stream. So yeah, please come along to that and and, and join in. It's uh, be nice to have a few more people along for that one. It's not quite as popular as uh, Factorio, unfortunately. But it'd be nice to have more people along to talk to while I'm while I'm just going away, grinding away at some of the more buildy parts. Um, it'd be yeah, it'd be great to have more people along to talk to. Thursday, I've got another video uh, coming out, so keep an eye out for that one. Um, and there should be if. If I manage to talk enough over this weekend, then there should be one for supporters as well. So if you're not a supporter and you want to, you want to find out, you want to learn more about Arcospheres, uh, make sure you've become a, a YouTube uh, member, a Twitch subscriber, or a Ko-Fi donator by uh, by Thursday, and you'll get early access to that video when it comes out. And also, of course, um, access to any of the blueprints that we've been making for the uh, for the for this series or for any of my other videos. Come along and, and ask for them in supporter chat, and I'll chuck them in on the in the uh, in the supporter area on the Discord. At the weekend, there will be more videos talking about the uh, the fact Monday's Factorio stream, and as it seems, I seem to have started making three of them every weekend, which is a little bit of a sort of inf uh, an inflation of of what I try to do, but. You know, I seem to have a fair amount to talk about, and the, the videos are all coming out at a decent length, so I think I'd rather make three half-hour videos than two 45-minute videos. I'll try to I'll try to stop myself from making three 45-minute videos, because that is genuinely excessive, and um, I, <laughs> I think that might be a little bit too much. But there do seem to be quite a lot of videos coming out over the weekend, so yep, yeah, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of that. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you in all of that during the week. Bye-bye. <laughs>